Irish football fan TV. Today I'm delighted to be joined by none other than Kieran Sadia. Uh, a lot of you will know him from the League of Ireland. Played with Saigo Rovers and Cork City, of course, most notably. Um, long term player at West Ham, had spells at St. Mirren, Peterborough, and Halifax um, before moving to Sligo. But, Kieran, what was, what was the motive originally um, for coming to the League of Ireland? Um, obviously, I was at Peterborough. Um, wasn't really wasn't really playing much. Uh, I was doing well and stuff and training and that. But um, I went on loan to Halifax for three months and I didn't enjoy it at all. And um, I felt I needed to. I think I was twenty twenty one. I needed to be playing first team football week in week out. And luckily enough, got a call from uh, Dave Robertson, who was who signed me at Peterborough, and then uh, he ended up. Uh, leaving and he got the job at Sligo so he called me and said look it's a great place blah 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 um, come over so uh, I went and chat with him looked, looked over uh, all the stuff like the stadium and, and his plans and it was good so I went over and, and to be honest I, I think I only signed on a short short contract uh, just because uh, it was a bit of a gamble obviously but cause I didn't really know much about the league so um, yeah, I signed on a short-term contract and then extended it near enough straight away. So that was the main reason to go over and play first-team football. But uh, and to be fair, it's, it was a gamble, but it's paid off. Yeah, because you you'd been playing underage for Ireland as well. Did that come about mm-hmm. while playing for Sligo, or was that a thing that was already happening? Um, no, no, no. I I played for Ireland since I was uh, fifteen. From 15s all the way up to 21. So I think when I moved over to Sligo, I was in the 21s. I don't know if I played a game. I might have. I think my last game for the 21s might have been before Sligo. So um, uh, yeah, but no, I knew people from the Irish team that were playing in the League of Ireland. So I asked for their opinions on uh, it, and to be fair, they spoke very highly of it. And uh, yeah, but um, no, I think the Ireland was before Sligo. Okay, um, and just in terms of the, the League of Ireland itself, um, obviously you got your move from Sligo to Cork, you went on to, to win the double, was that your first season? Uh, at, yeah, my first season at Cork, at Cork yeah. was double, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't a bad way to end the season as well, because you scored the winning penalty in the cup final. Yeah, yeah, it was a good season, obviously. Um, to be fair, the Cork move could have come about even earlier, I think. When I first went over to Sligo, we played Cork in my fourth game, and uh, they tried to sign me then, but I decided to stay at, um, at Sligo because obviously Dave Robertson was the manager and he'd given me a chance there, and I, I enjoyed it a lot. So um, that's what made me sign the extra deal for longer at Sligo. But then again, when when they came calling, I think it was 18 months later, that was when. I felt it was the right time to, to move there and and it, it was a gamble it, well, it wasn't a gamble at all really it was a, a move that that uh, yeah won me a double and and got me eventually back to England. Yeah, I I suppose last season you know I I watched a lot of your games and you know I felt as though a lot of the games you were affecting games when you were coming on you obviously finished on I think it was twenty six goals in all competitions. Yeah, yeah so. I mean, th- there was games I was looking at and you were being left out here and there after, you know, affecting games. And I was kind of struggling. But how how did you cope with that? That must have been frustrating, considering you were fairly up to top in terms of the, you know, the scoring charts and stuff like that. And you, even yeah. the fans, I know, like, even on, there was a lot of social media uh, backlash that you were getting dropped a lot of time. Because, you, um, you know, obviously... A lot of people follow our page and they always speak very highly, especially down in Cork. You're a real fan's favourite yeah. too, you know? Yeah, um, no. You're always going to get dropped as a footballer. Like It's, it's, it's going to happen, however well you're doing. At the time, maybe, obviously, people don't agree that I should have been dropped at certain times, but it's going to happen. And I, I'm not really, I'm never going to sulk about it. I'm not one to sulk. I just get back on the training pitch and just carry on training and work harder. But... Um, yeah, there, there was times when I was dropped and I didn't think I deserved to be, and and uh, especially during the European phase, uh, the first three games uh, that we had, Legia Warsaw and Rosenborg, and I think I came on at half time against Rosenborg and I wanted to prove a point that I could make a difference, and obviously I played very well in the second half against Rosenborg. And, and you, you, hit the, you hit the post, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I hit the post with a free kick, and then 
uh, we went out to Rosenborg a week or two later and I started that game and, and it was a game that I really enjoyed playing in and I, I played really well so even though we, we did lose but um, whether or not I don't know if I would have made a difference if I'd started the other three but I'd like to think I could have and try and help the team a bit more and gone more attacking wise but um, that's the manager's decision so I'm not going to argue with it I'm just going to get on with it yeah, no, but even at times I felt as though, you know, Cork would have been struggling for, you know, a bit of attacking flair at times and stuff like that. And there was still signs that you kind of, you know, not even getting warmed up and stuff like that. I just thought it was a bit, um, a bit much, to be honest, in my own opinion. But um, ultimately, the move to Cork has paid off. You've moved to, you've moved to Doncaster. But um, what was the major choose, Doncaster? I know when I'm, I'm last time I seen you was... I think the last time you were in Ireland before before the award ceremony, um, yeah. and you were saying that you had a, a number of clubs interested. Um, what was the motive behind going to Doncaster of, of all um, the clubs? Well, I've, I've had clubs watching me all season and um, coming to games and stuff. I've had other clubs. I had League Two, League One, and a few Championship clubs uh, very keen. So, to be honest, Doncaster, uh, Grant McCann, the manager, called me uh, himself. And to be honest, as soon as he, I'd spoken to him, there was that was my decision made. It was just about uh, it was, that was my decision made, and it was just about um, just doing as well as I can for court for the rest of the season, and then um, decide oh I'll get it sorted when the season had finished. So uh, he's, he's a manager I've worked with before. He was the assistant at Peterborough, and I know he rated me there. And uh, I needed to go away and play regular first team football and physically develop a bit better and, and learn the game and I've done that now and now he's been trusting me to to bring you back to League One and do well for Doncaster. So to be honest, as soon as he called me that was my mate that was my mind made up and I wanted to go into a club where a manager knew me, uh, and wasn't there was no risk of him not knowing me and maybe he hadn't even watched me and it was get another gamble. Um, and I feel I feel really yeah, it, that was the decision and it was always gonna be that so yeah, now you 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 you'd said um, like obviously you've worked with him previously, so obviously it's it's a handy to ha- to walk into you know the manager that you know is kind of have faith in you more so than than previously. Mm-hmm. But um, a lot of people have have been asking this, and I just I thought you'd be actually the best person to ask. But what would you kind of say the level is uh, in terms of League One and and the League of Ireland? Um, if you were to the, talk about the you know the levels, I suppose. Was, is it, I think it's quite difficult to say because you've got, for example, Dundalk uh, a few years ago uh, played in the Europa League group stages against some top teams, European teams there. Um, I think it was St. Petersburg and I can't remember the other two teams. But um, So you've got them who could play... Uh, ba- like Bate, them. Borisov, I think one was. Yeah, for example, they're doing well against teams like that. And then you've got ourselves who at Cork when I was at Cork we did well and then maybe one or two other teams could play maybe hold their own in the league football in England but I don't know it's, it's hard to say that move from training at Doncaster the last two weeks the standard is higher again 100% the intensity of it I think it's the intensity and there's less mistakes uh, the, the passing is more uh, it's fo- more football or orientated like They've been like most of the lads in England have been through an academy, so they've been taught certain things. Whereas in Ireland, some boys have been through academies, but some boys yeah, have not, just not in Ireland, yeah. and they haven't got yeah, and they haven't got the coaching that uh, the boys in England would have got. So um, we like to play football at Doncaster as well. So it's uh, it, that that's a big that's a big thing as well. Yeah, um, just in terms of. Going forward now with Doncaster, is is the aim to kind of get to the top of the ladder, maybe get them promoted, um, have the you know the international manager Mick McCarthy come and watch you, similar to mm-hmm. Ronan Curtis now at Portsmouth. Obviously, Mick's been he said on goals on Sunday last week he's been to watch, uh, Ronan and he's he's having a quite good season since he's moved from Derry, um, similar yeah. to yourself now coming from Cork, you know. Yeah, no, obviously the aim uh, right now is the main aim in I found eighteen months is to get promoted to the championship for the club. Uh, that's that's my main aim. But first of all, my my personal aim is to try and get in that team because 
we've got a very strong team who are doing very well just outside the playoffs and uh, I need to, I want to get into that, that team obviously so for me personally I'll, that's my aim right now and my my aim further down the line is obviously is to uh, if I do get in that team and do well is to obviously a dream of mine would be to be called up for senior international but uh, no my aim right now is to just to get in the team and then get help us get promoted yeah I suppose take each game as it comes and uh, you were saying before that uh, it seems as though your first game that you, I think you're eligible for would be against Preston. Some familiar faces mm-hmm. there. Uh, would that be a nice one to, to get your debut for? Wouldn't it? Yeah, that, that that would be that would be nice. But um, I think I think I'm eligible. I, I should be available for that game, whether or not I play or feature. I'm not sure. That's that's down to obviously the manager because I haven't played in two months over two months. But uh, I'm working on my fitness now and. And um, maybe we'll see, uh, uh, but it's, it's stuff I can't control. So it's uh, when I do get my debut, it'll be a, it'll be a nice feeling. Absolutely, absolutely. I just have a couple of fan questions just to, to finish off here. So uh, I'm just gonna sure. uh, read them out. So Pat Pat McAvoy, it's uh, one of two uh, on Twitter. He says, "How motivating was it to see fans, young and old, wishing you well after the matches, whether or out and about?" Yeah. Um, no, it was obviously great. I think both at Sligo and and Cork, you've got good fan bases, and obviously because we were doing so well at Cork, we had slightly more at Turner's Cross. But um, yeah, it's nice to it's nice to see them wearing Cork uh, shirts instead of maybe like Man United shirts or something around the place. And uh, it's it's a club that's done very well in, in the last few years and. And it's uh, it's got great support. Um, obviously, you get loads of people online and stuff like the kids and that trying to talk to you, and and uh, it's nice to have them supporting you. Yeah, and, and you, as I said earlier, like you seem to be a real you know fans favorite. I had, yeah. I've had so many messages of people. It was hard to kind of pick just a few, you know. Uh, yeah. Second, the second bit. I think you, you kind of already touched over this, in my opinion. Um, it's as in an interview you mentioned it was tough being uh, left out of Champions League games. How did you deal with the setback, knowing you could have made a difference if you had played? Um, uh, obviously, I think anybody who thinks they can go on and make an impact is going to be angry or frustrated, let's say, when you're not picked, especially for probably arguably the biggest games of the season, the most watched games of the season. You build up for those times and not to be picked when you're doing really well is frustrating, but... It's, it, I was never going to moan about it. well, never going to moan and, about it to the manager or I'll ask the question and see why, but um, that, I don't, didn't really get a reason to be honest, but um, yeah, it, it's frustrating, but you just get on with it and you, you respond in the right way, which I did against Rosenborg when I came on and then the, the final game against them as well, so that's the way to respond and um, I'm pleased I did that, but it's something I put behind me now. Uh, I got the I got what I deserved in the end, and um, I did well for myself and and helped the club also to to create history in the the double team and obviously we'd love to have won trophies this year, but um, it just wasn't to be. Yeah, um, I suppose you let your feet do the talking at the end of the day, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and lastly, yeah. Um, well, actually, this is the last question for him, but I've uh, I've one more to ask you after that. Um, it, Nick Menez says, as a granny real player who has played League of Ireland, how does he feel about some fans saying domestic players should be prioritised over UK-born players despite genuine links to Ireland? Mm-hmm. Um, well, obviously myself, I was born in England and I qualify through my uh, my granddad uh, on my dad's side. Um, but... And again, I've played for Ireland since the age of 15. Uh, when I was 15, 16, I had a choice. Uh, England were interested and Ireland were interested, and I chose Ireland. But uh, So I've played all the way up through the ages, and that, that would be a proud moment for me to make my senior debut. But obviously I know there's talk of maybe players that haven't played for Ireland in any age group being called up to the senior squad. But uh, it's, if, if, you're winning, if, you're, if you're in the team and you're doing well for the country and, and you are serious about playing for Ireland, then that's... I have no real opinion on it, to be honest. But um, it's obviously it's just a proud moment to put on the Irish shirt uh, if you've got Irish in you and 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 you and you and you want and you have ambitions to play for them. So 
I don't really have an opinion on it, to be honest, but um, I'm just concentrating on trying to do it myself. Absolutely. Um, and just the last thing I wanted to ask you, that goal you scored from your own half, did you mean it? Half meant that. Uh, I think I've said this before. Uh, I, when 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 the the keeper came out for the corner, I did see him, and I said I thought to myself, well, I wonder if the ball did drop, if I could try and catch him out of the goal. I think every player thinks, oh, with keepers up, that's your next sport. Can you catch him out? If of the it goal? breaks, but yeah. If it breaks, and to be honest, it dropped perfectly, and I just thought I'm just going to hit it and see why not. And to be honest, I never thought it would reach because it was, I think it was about 100 yards or something from my own box, but. It obviously did reach, and I don't know the ground was quite hard that day, so it just kept rolling. But it went down the centre of the goal, and um, yeah, it was one I won't forget. But, but yeah, I'd say a half meant it. I didn't fully mean it, like yeah. But I was just glad it. I was glad it went in, obviously. Absolutely, and you you you'd scored some fair you no know, pingers this season. But what what would have been your favourite goal of of this, this season just gone? If you had to pick one, favorite, you had a few now to be. Favourite goal. Yeah, obviously I scored, I think it was 31 in all for Cork and 49 in the whole time I was in Ireland. But my favourite goal, to be honest, the penalty, uh, not even, I don't think it even counts, but the penalty... Um, oh, the winning penalty on the cup? The winning, the winning penalty in the cup was the best feeling I've ever had, purely just because it's winning the cup and the... Uh, the way we we'd been played down, how we weren't going to win, and how Dundalk with this and that, and it's always nice to to kind of shut people up and and go and win it. But my favourite personal goal technically was probably probably going to surprise you, but my header against Longford. I was uh, you, or, did you score a hat trick that day? Yeah, the, I scored the hat trick, but the I think it was the first one, the header, which is something that I'd I'd worked on and I know I'm quite good at, but I hadn't done enough, which was heading. And the boys had said to me that week, uh, you need to start getting in the box and scoring more headers because you've got a good leap. And then I, f- I did it. So is it Barry, Barry McNamee cross? Uh, no, the she- Shepherd. Oh, OK. Uh, no, the, 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 he set you up for another header, though, didn't he? Yeah, I scored another header in a, in a hat-trick against Bray at the end ah, of the Ah, sorry, yeah, I get confused. Was, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that was Baz's cross. But it was Shep's cross. Now it was in the, the cup. The uh, FAI Cup. Yeah, oh, you Head scored a nice one from from quite far out. Yeah, to, yeah. To wrap up the hatchet. Since the third one, that obviously that's up there, one of my favourites. But just purely the 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 heading one. I think a lot of people can strike a ball well, and sometimes it comes off, sometimes it don't. So, but I think the header, I just just everything about it, and maybe the second goal as well, where I've played the cross across, and someone's crossed it in. And, I've scored at the back post, but which probably won't surprise a lot of people. That's my favourite. Those yeah. are my two favourites, but uh, yeah, those two I'd say. Yeah, there's some goals now to be fair, but um, listen, I just want to say best luck for the rest of the season. And uh, if I do get over to the UK at some point, I I hope to get over and watch you play. If not, I'm sure mm-hmm. I'll catch you on the telly. Where what what date is the Preston game? The Sunday the sixth. Okay, so that's probably Sunday, um, this sixth? week, isn't Sunday it? It's coming. Yeah, it's um, Sunday week. So, yeah, what, what day is it today? It'd Sunday be this today. Sunday, I think, coming. Today's yeah, Sunday, Sunday, so yeah, I, I don't, we're all losing track of the days. It's Christmas time. A week, a week today at Deep, though. That's when it is. Yeah. So, yeah. If, if anyone's watching, uh, make sure you're keeping up to date. Um, hopefully, Kira can get into the squad by then um, to obviously play against some of his former teammates. And you're friends mm-hmm. with a few lads on the team anyway, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Adam Brown and that. But uh, no, I just want to wish you best of luck for the rest of the season. And, um, you know, I hope you break into the squad. I hope you um, go up. And I hope you get into the Ireland squad. That's the end. Well, Thank you. Thanks very much for your time, Kieran. It's been an absolute pleasure. No worries, no worries. Happy New Year. You too, man. Well, guys, uh, that's been uh, the interview with Kieran Tyler. It's been a, a long time coming. Uh, just things got in the way. Obviously, the holiday period was meant to be done sooner. He had his move. The season ended and stuff like that. But uh, if you want more videos like this, don't forget to hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Have a great day.